From the Depths recently became my number one played game on Steam. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I think I'm pretty good at it. But if you don't believe me, then listen to what Borderwise has to say about some of my creations. Wait a minute, who did this? This is Jaloric makes awesome things. Should I just throw everyone else's designs out, including my own, and we just use Jaloric's designs? <laughs> but somehow, there is an achievement in From the Depths that I have never gotten. And if I want to inflate my ego even more, then there's only one thing I can do. That's right, in today's episode, we're going to be beating the From the Depths tutorial. Uh, it looks like I already did that back in April of 2020. I guess I was a little bored during the pandemic. No matter, we'll do something slightly easier, and that is get a ship of mine into the campaign. You may not think I'm being serious, but I'm actually very serious. So if I just come over here to the From the Depths Discord server and I scroll all the way down here, uh, there's a channel called Bounty Board. If you come in here and click this thing right here, you'll be given the Bounty Hunter role. And if you come into this channel right here, we can scroll around and see all the bounties that are up for grabs. So in this episode, we're gonna work on this one right here. There are two Onyx Watch bounties and we can read the requirements for them here. I'm not gonna go through all the requirements, but there's some here, uh, as you can see on screen. And if I go to the pinned messages, there's also all of this. Let's hop back to From the Depths for a moment here and figure out exactly what we're doing. So we need to build a hybrid castle ship. And from my brief research, my understanding is a hybrid castle ship is somewhere in between a full-on Onyx Watch castle ship and the ironclad sailing ships that were present in real life during World War I and World War II. Included in the bounty were four example ships that we're gonna have a pretty quick and brief look at before we get to the actual construction of our ship for our inspiration. So on screen you can see the four hybrid castle ships that were specifically mentioned in the bounty, so we're trying to make a ship that resembles these four. So in this episode we're going to focus on the weaponry. As you can see there's a lot of cram cannons and it was also mentioned in this bounty that we have to use this crossbow looking thing. I believe it shoots a single medium missile. Um, and this crossbow thing is actually on a few of these things, but not all of them, so I don't know if there's wiggle room there or not. And lastly, we're just looking at the V menu of the German Gand, and you can see that its volume is about 30,000 meters squared, which is just a little bit over what the uh, bounty requires, which is about 27,000 meters squared. So the German Guard, German Gand, whatever it's called, is close in scale to what we're going for. It was mentioned in the bounty post that we could use cram as AA guns, and I am going big or going home. So, so I began my journey to make some AA cram simply by slapping down some random cram turret I have. This is the cram turret from the crocodile, I believe, or maybe the alligator, I can't even remember anymore. But either way, the point is you can see here I have this thing, I just reconfigured the loadout to be entirely frag. And you can see, uh, when I hover over this, on the bottom right you can see I have 43 fragments, which is pretty good, but just any old cram cannon, like this one right here, already has 20 fragments, as you can see down there. And I pretty quickly realized into testing that in order to make an AA cram system that relied on fragments, I wanted as many fragments as possible in the air. I just wanted to put as many fragments as I can up there. Now you can see that this one has about 8,000 damage per fragment, whereas over here we have 50,000 damage per fragment. So there's definitely reason to use a huge cram gun and have huge, really hard hitting fragments. But really, I don't really care about that. I mean, this is Onyx Watch. We're mostly firing against wooden ships, deep water guards, supposed to be a relatively easy faction. I'm not too worried about that. Plus, I mean, 8,000 damage is nothing to scoff at. And this is like the tiniest, most basic cram cannon you could possibly imagine. It's literally just like a simple little 2D Tetris. I have them packed in here so that it's some material efficiency going on. Like this one is pretty much a free cram cannon in the grid. Um, but something like this is definitely going to be pretty viable. These ones are just aimed straight up. Um, and you're gonna see that I end up using something similar to this later on. So after seeing that the most viable strategy is just gonna have as many fragments as possible and just boring plain 
cram gun already has 20 fragments so i'm not really trying to optimize the number of fragments that way instead i'm trying to get as many barrels as many cram bullets as i can in the air the one issue with this one as you can see the reload time is 34 seconds which is absolutely brutal we're going to be already dead by that time i need this thing to have a pretty quick reload time as far as cram guns go because that means more bullets more fragments more destruction that brings us to this design over here. I was uh, trying to think of a way, I wanted to have one of those like gimbling AA guns where uh, it has like a side to side and a separate up and down. So I built something like this as the base, as a frame, and you could imagine that in the middle here would be a separate piece that goes up and down. Now, I was originally only gonna do four barrels, but as I discovered doing this test, adding the fifth barrel right in the middle is pretty much free because I get to steal a bunch of the fragment pellets from, the, from his neighbors. So I ended up with this five barrel design, as you can see right here. Uh, it's not really anything fancy, but this is kind of what it was looking like. I realized that it'd be a little bit too big because I wouldn't be able to put armor on the sides here on my, you can see my five barrel nine by nine gun is starting to take shape. So you can see it's kind of a bit of a weird shape. This back side is technically a circle. This is the exact shape that something is allowed to be and still rotate around, as you can see on my base plate here. Uh, that is the correct shape. And on the front side, this it's can still circular up to this point. And then this point is where the flat face of the gun starts. And I've just rounded out the flat face of the gun a little bit, just to give it a little bit of uh, depth. The next step was to combine this piece with this piece, and I ended up with this. Now, uh, it is pretty ugly, but it gets the job done. Um, we can take a quick look at the internals here. You can see I at some point realized that putting extra payload packers in sideways was definitely a good idea because it uh, uses the same number of connections per layer but this way I'm actually reducing the amount of actual fragmentation pellets which is always good helps that material efficiency but it doesn't really work that well because I only have I'm only four deep so you can see that's a bit of an issue in this variant and another issue in this variant is that the center cannon is getting really out of whack with the outer cannons you can see this was reload time of 9.25 these ones are 8.81 Another issue is that this doesn't really look onyx watchy at all. So on this side, I just decided to have this like ball bearing thing. This is actually connected um, to the turret itself. So you can see it rotates with the turret, which I think is pretty cool, little ball bearing type deal. On the other side, uh, instead of having the same thing, I have this sphere. And I thought it'd be cool to have some kind of like targeting system or something like that in this sphere eventually. I wanted this to be kind of like high tech as far as Onyx Watch standards go. This is like a experimental, like fancy high tech AA cram gun. So I just put this on the side to try and give it some kind of feeling on the side. Now it was mentioned in the Discord that the gun, that the ship is to have a very specific style. And it was actually specifically mentioned that these castle hybrid ships have a very specific style of turret. So I needed to make sure that I'm following that. And I figured the best way to make sure I'm following it is to just copy it. So, first I set my prefab tool to about the size that it needs to be. So you can see each face of this gun is about a 9x9. So I'm going to take that information over to the Jorm or whatever the heck this thing is called. And I'm going to find myself a 9x9 turret, like this one right here. I took this as a prefab, I went back over here, and I pretty much slapped it in. Of course, that's not exactly how that went down. Uh, I did go through a couple of iterations. I ended up tucking in uh, these crenellations, I suppose they're called. Uh, they used to be a block further out, and I tucked them in. And I, of course, modified the exterior shape as well. I gave it a little bit of curves. I used some applique to give it some more curvature. As for the turret itself, I flattened out the front plate again by adding these, like, interesting shapes to it so you can see it kind of mimics the shape of the gun this is the old one for comparison and then i continued that kind of rigid shape all over the top and along the back i did however keep the bottom of it round and i figured that's because uh you can see in there i put like some rubber tires the idea is that 
the actual mechanism would be kind of like a rubber rolling wheel on the bottom, just kind of rolling over the bottom of this thing. And so the bottom, about 90 degrees right here, is actually completely flat so that the wheel would have good contact. So you can see the ridge work on the back has really made a big difference. And I went over with the paint, painting up everything in trim, just like how on the Jormungand, how do you pronounce that thing? Jormungand, just like on the Jormungand, all of the turrets have these ridges that are color blue. I tried to imitate that kind of thing, and also they have these kind of ridges going on. So I tried to imitate that kind of thing on this turret. So you can kind of see if you look at it from like this angle, kind of, yeah, like that. That kind of is vaguely reminiscent of this turret right here. You can kind of see how those are kind of related. But obviously this one is horizontal, which makes it special and unique. And finally, the last thing I did is on the bottom, I just added this kind of plow shape going on here. Uh, and just in case you're wondering, even though this looks like it's contacting and it might be kind of rubbing against each other, this is technically legal as far as I can tell. I mean, it is spin clipping because this is a second sub object on top of a first sub object. But these blocks are not technically spin clipping. Uh, like if physics was applied, this should still work as far as I'm aware. If this, Even if this wasn't spin clipping, it would not be spin clipping if that makes sense. Um, I use this uh, as a guide to this thing that's on the floor right here. Uh, this is my test fortress where I have a guide set up and this is only possible because of the recent update that allows the surfaces to rub really close together and this happens to be a size I think it's 13 but is it 11 by 11 or 13 by 13 I don't remember but this has to be a size that is pretty darn close it's got really slim margins as you can see right here I have a IR camera tracker on both sides on the original turrets you have the visual trackers However, I did get confirmation in the Discord that IR trackers are allowed for the AA systems, and I figured it just fit because uh, this way it can also swivel up and down, which is important because this is actually mounted on the swivel platform, whereas this is going to be the part that swivels up and down. With that done, I did some testing, and I found that it was pretty good, but it's really large, it's really bulky. I can't really spam this all over the place, and I need spam. I need these cram guns everywhere. I need cheap, I need small, I need redundant. I need them everywhere. So, even though these are pretty good, I needed to do better. And so we move on to my dome turret over here, as you can see. Originally, I just had this as a sphere, but it looks kind of silly. I really preferred the rigid uh, structured shapes that Onyx Walks usually have, so I felt like a sphere was a little bit pushing it. But as you can see, I still have a circular thing going on over the top here, which makes sense because this turret can in fact swivel that entire distance. If you're wondering how I got this to line up properly, uh, this is how it works. So the firing piece is buried way down here. The circles are actually based on either side of that firing piece, which means uh, the firing piece is the rotation point for the turret, which means that... Uh, these circles are perfectly in line with the rotation point. If, for example, the circles were a little bit up higher, it would look kind of janky as it's rotating around because the circles wouldn't be lined up properly. Furthermore, the interior piece is actually connected to the barrel. Uh, I placed it on the firing piece and then shifted the tether point up. And the reason for that is, as you can see, if I select the weapon and scroll up and down, you can actually see that the uh, the turret is connected to the center piece so that as it rotates up and down, it slides back and forth. So this was a decent turret and all. I also extended this one to be five blocks long. That way we have a nice diamond tetris going on here. But like I said, I really wanted to spam this everywhere. And if I spammed this everywhere, it's only a three by three base. So in theory, I could put one like here. But the issue is that this one turret cap is going to interfere with that turret cap so I cannot place them that close if I can't place them that close anyway then I'm just wasting space so my next iteration I made it fatter so you can see I went to I transitioned into a 5x5 five five design I did a lot of testing to really optimize this thing I found that by putting these two extra gauge increasers I managed to get from 20 to 22 fragments and I found that was worth it but any more gauge increasers don't increase the fragments one-to-one -one like that, so it's not worth it after that. 
I also actually have a single payload compactor in this thing somewhere. Yes, right here. Uh, because of the way that the Tetris works out, there's actually three connections to this one payload compactor, which makes it pretty efficient to have. And technically, it actually is beneficial to the material per volume to put payload compactors like here and here, for example. But, like I said, this is really optimizing for as many fragments in the air as possible, and adding more of those reduces the reload time, but it doesn't increase the fragments proportionally. So you lose out on your fragments per second so to speak. I also have a quick overview of the Tetris in here. So what I've got here is the firing piece and then a cram connector and then this cram connector is surrounded by metal so that's a bit of a turret neck and then underneath we have our simple 5x5. Five five. Uh, down here is actually 3D Tetris. I'd had enough space to do some 3D Tetris so you can see there's actually 10 fragmentation pellets arranged in this X formation on either side and they are just completely wrapped around with payload packers and just because of the way the x formation worked out uh, that's where my payload compactor goes right there all the air gaps got filled in with metal for good luck i put a three meter surge protector on the front and i put two aio local weapon controllers on the back opposite that you're supposed to put these away from each other so that the emp gets attracted to this and away from these but just for redundancy i actually have four all-in-one local weapon controllers all over this thing I don't really know if that's necessary, but these things are pretty cheap. Uh, they're only 100 each, so I really don't see a good reason not to just spam these things everywhere. They're so useful. <laughs> but this is not the final design. I still had a couple more iterations to make, so let's load up the final design, which is this one right here. One funny thing that I noticed is that when I fired this one, The whole entire thing rotates around when it reloads, so on the new version I have it set so that it does not rotate when reloading, that was pretty funny. Furthermore, you can also see the circle is kind of overlapping here, so I made some adjustments to that. And I did further testing and I found that the best thing to do in order for the maximum damage on these things is to set the offset time to zero, but then set the fragmentations to 180. So if we miss by just a little bit, we're still pretty likely to hit it with a fragment. That's in contrast to the original version, which I had the fragmentation a little bit lower. But to compensate for that, my offset time was negative 0.5. So what that meant was that it would explode a little bit ahead of the target and then fan out. But now I found that it's better, it's more effective to explode on the target if possible and fan out in 180 degrees rather than in front of the target on 45. By the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I actually did an interesting trick on these turrets, which I've seen done a couple times and I've done myself a couple times, but the cram firing piece here is actually facing upwards. And the reason for that is that I have enough pivot barrels that it is able to, you can see on the bottom there, uh, max barrel elevation is 75 degrees. What that means is that it can go down to 75 degrees from straight up down. Uh, which is only about 15 degrees off of straight forward. So it cannot aim straight forward. It can only aim up, but I think that's okay for an AA gun. But the advantage of that is that it can aim up and even backwards a huge distance, an absolutely huge distance. And I feel like that's more important for an AA gun than being able to fire straight forward, especially because it's a cram gun and it often has to aim a little bit up to arc its shot anyways. Now, I'm not sure if this design is considered cheese, but I really hope not. Uh, you can use this as cheese in a lot of situations. First of all, with an advanced cannon, especially if you're using an AA mantlet, doing this allows you to have your firing piece aim straight down, which means that you don't need to have a turret neck sometimes. Like if you're building a really small turret, you can literally have this as your turret and just like surround that in heavy armor and that's your entire turret cap. That is a little bit cheesy. In this situation, it's not that cheesy. If I could put this like on a 45 degree angle, I would. If I could use an AA mantlet, I would. I could even still put the firing piece at the proper angle and stick the barrel at the front and that wouldn't be that big a deal, but then it wouldn't be able to fire straight up. So I'm hoping this isn't considered cheese. 
One other kind of cheesy part about this is that the barrel doesn't really have collision when it's like this because the way the barrel's collision works is that it's always in this line right here. So normally your barrel would be sticking out the front here and that would prevent the turret from turning say like into the hull if there's a wall beside it. But because the turret barrel is actually going straight up, uh, there actually is no collision all the way around. I mean as long as the turret cap itself doesn't collide with anything. As long as the wall doesn't collide with, like, say this, it actually won't collide with what normally would collide with the turret barrel being right here. So when we build the final ship, we just have to make sure we set the firing restrictions very, very conservatively. And we have to hope that they don't consider this cheese and won't allow it in the campaign. <laughs> so in the end, my small dome turrets cost about 5,000 materials and have a volume of about 250. And my larger AA guns have a material cost of about 23,000 with about a volume of 700. If I built a ship with three of these and 10 of these, that would bring the cost up to about 115,000 materials. I tend to like to have my ships be 50 to 60% cost in straight up weaponry. So if I'm making a ship for about $200,000, that is pretty good. I might actually reduce a few of those weapons because I think keeping it in a lower weight class would probably be for the best, but we'll get there when we get there. Also, this isn't technically all of the weaponry because like I said at the beginning of the video, I do need to use those crossbows that are on some of the other ships, but again, we'll get there when we get there. And my rough estimation is that these guns will use approximately three to 4,000 of my 27,000 allowed volume so that means we have a lot of volume left over even though we've spent a lot of money on guns and these are pretty material efficient cram guns so i'm pretty happy with that we have a lot of volume left over to make this nice and big and chonky as a good onyx watch castle ship should be And so what we're looking at here is the final armament that I've decided on. I've got three of these five barrel AA turrets, as you can see, and I have 10 of these upward firing AA dome turrets um, for a total cost of about 115,000 materials, which is not bad. It looks like this ship hopefully is going to be under 200k. And given that the larger guns are actually deck mounted and the smaller guns are actually properly inset in the hull this is going to be an interesting build for sure a very interesting build and you can see i'm just circling around to give you a view of the aesthetic so let's have a quick combat test of my final armament here i mean we have to do that right i mean it just makes sense so let's get into planes and we're gonna spawn in the Deepwater Guard's biggest, baddest plane, the Felix Flyger B5 Geiger. Um, this first shot is kind of all over the place. But once they get it locked in, it's going to be a really quick battle. You can see even though the crams are missing quite a lot of the time, the frag is still managing to do some serious damage. At this point the fight is pretty much over because the Geyer is um, in loss of control because I took out one of the, its propellers. But I didn't realize that just yet. And this is actually one of the longer fights that I had against this thing um, just because I think the propeller got taken out early which caused it to go into a death spiral. If it didn't go into a death spiral, I probably would have just AI deaded it pretty quickly. Well, that's pretty sick result considering that uh, the Deepwater Guard are their main enemies and this armament can take out the Deepwater Guard's best aircraft in almost a minute, which is pretty sweet. And that was not sped up by the way, that was one minute. So we're going to try a Steel Strider, we're going to medium, we're going to get something a little bit cheaper, like a Hake Squadron. So 
So let's see how long it takes us to take out a Hague Squadron. You can see the Hakes are a little bit harder to hit. But we're still getting some decent damage in every once in a while. And we managed to take out the Hakes in about 10 minutes, which is pretty long time. But given that this is a pure cram AA solution, I think that is pretty good. So anyways, thanks for watching this video and I will see you guys.